Today on this old house. This piece here comes from Germany. It's uh, over 100 years old. Very nice. And if we don't, but it doesn't. <laughs> wow. Wow. Kevin got really mad. <laughs> what happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. It's five bathrooms, it's a kitchen, it's a full new mechanical. It's, it's going to be a biggie. Sounds like you guys have a plan. I think we do. <laughs> Money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house here at Cape Ann, Massachusetts and our 1890s shingle style home that is getting a new 750 pound tub going through the second story window. Now over here is going to be the new side yard for the house and right up here along this entire length, well that was the original three season porch but you can see all of the glass, the windows and doors that have been put in and it's been closed in. And that's because now it's going to be both a dining room and a breakfast nook. Now, right here, hey guys, there used to be a garage. That came down. We've got the new front porch. And Mark McCullough's guys had to rebuild this wall right here. He found some granite on the job site. Use that. It's a perfect match. Looks terrific. Although, next to this beauty right here, it looks pretty regular. Look at this beautiful staircase. So we've got the big sweeping sides in granite. And then we've got the steps, both the treads and the riser in the big, thick bluestone. And what a way to enter this house. Now, a lot of new windows on this house, but there are two places where we have the originals. One is in the staircase and the other is right here. Hey, Catherine. Hi. So this is the front corner entryway. Yep. How would you describe these windows? I would describe them as functional leaded glass windows. Functional because uh, at one point casements had swung out, correct? Swung out, yeah, they were functional that way, but they also keep out the snow and the wind and the rain. They, they do the job of a window. Not just decorative. Not just a pretty face. And uh, original to the house? Do they go yeah. all the way back to the 1890s? I think so. I, I, there's nothing about them that tells me they don't. Beautiful. Okay. So obviously a repair here. We have a broken piece of glass. Yep. You'll handle that for us. How are they otherwise? And anything else you want to tune up at this point? They're great. They're nice and solid. They sound solid. What, what, what does a solid sound mean? It's not rattling. There's no damage to the lead came. The support bars are intact. Uh, the putty hasn't come loose. Okay. It would be a clear ding ling ling yeah. <laughs> if they were rattly. Well, that's good to hear that we yeah. don't have that. No, they're good. Anywhere else that we have to worry about? or just a I'm going to touch this up. This is a previous repair that was done, done differently than I'm going to do it. I'm going to remove this window so there's no damage to the came. Here the cane got pretty chewed up. I'm the, gonna. The, the cane is this piece of lead that goes between the cane. Yep. 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 It goes between the pieces of glass. I'm gonna try to touch this up, smooth it out, so it doesn't alert itself, okay. tell you about itself. I don't know. Make Sorry. it look good. Yeah. yeah. Make it look better. That works. Okay. So um, does it start with pulling out this piece here? Yep. What I'm doing right now is because these are gonna stay in place, the sashes are gonna stay, but I'm taking out the glazing here and have a look at this. It's coming out pretty easily. Old and dry, that's what that Old tells me. Old and crunchy, yeah. yeah. But it was doing the job, and I'm going to just continue to do this, then I'll remove the window, and, and you'll see how I fix it. Can I just say that um, you folks who repair windows have the coolest tools? We do. <laughs> Things like this. <laughs> the so. Don Carlos knife, yeah. What's it called? A Don Carlos. Beautiful. Yeah, they're great, and you use them all the time. Have at it. I won't get in your way. Thank you so much. So at this point, I've gotten away all the old glazing. The window is pretty loose. Oh, yeah, it is. Would you go inside and undo that last tie, and then we're done. OK, that's loose. Oh, oh, geez, a little that's nerve wracking. Got it? Yes. A little workstation There's you've got. the window, yes. Just for yourself. There it is. So okay. now I'm going to determine the best way to get at this piece of glass. And I think it's going to be here. And, and by best way to get at it, you mean you're going to have to cut stuff away? Yeah, I'm going to cut this lead. So I'll bend these up a little. I'm going to break through the lead. 
and then I'll be able to take this piece out, fashion a new one, and then insert it back in. Let's see you do that. There it is. Oh, wow, look at that. Yep. So this was holding those lower panes of glass. Yeah. That's the heart? Yeah, yeah, because there's a channel to the lid and the glass inserts in there. Yep. Mm -hmm. that is terrific. So I'm gonna go after some of the old putty that's in here. With just what, a hook? Just a hook, just to get it out. Oh, huh? so satisfying. It is, and wait till I put it back in. It'll be super satisfying. Now that I've got this out, Kevin, it's my template. Now it's time to cut the glass. And I like to use this type of glass cutter. It's called a pistol grip. Mm -hmm. It aids with fatigue. If you're cutting glass all day, it's, it's yep. really nice yep. to have. The little um, nozzle at the end there, so you got some oil in there? Yep, there's oil inside. It's self-feeding. Two distinctive and satisfying sounds. Yes. This piece fit very, very well, so I know it's going to work. I know I can soon join these two pieces of window together. I'm just going to clean up these ends so it'll accept the solder. And I see a real delicate touch, too, with that thing. Have to be. All right, so Kevin, my task now is to push these together. Yes. Oh, yes. That'll do. Now I just need to solder it. Nice. All right, actually, that's, that's really good. And now, Kevin, just a little bit of chemical patina so the repair isn't very conspicuous. Some sort of instant aging. Yeah, yep. And there you go. Okay, about to put the window back in, but real quick, just a little linseed oil, just to nourish the wood. So this is the bead of putty you were going to push the panel into. That is exactly right. So this is the piece of glass that we put in. That's our new piece of glass. And you're just filling in the uh, lead cane? I am, yep. And it's going to push under the cane. And this is what will make the window waterproof. And it also gives it rigidity. And this putty is already dyed black? Yeah, it's got stove black in it. It's got linseed oil. It's, uh, yeah, this it's is just how what I you buy need. it. It's just what I need. All right, it's looking pretty good. Okay, moment of truth, Catherine. I love it. I so know, much. this is the big moment. Just like that All right. around. Drop it in there, push it forward. Catherine, you are awesome. Thank you so much. That was fascinating to watch. I'm glad you liked it. All right, appreciate Thanks. it. Now you can watch This Old House and Ask This Old House anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovations, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. So the homeowners really wanted a buffer between the woodland area and the driveway. Hey Fred. Morning Jen. Looking good. Thank you. So we have this 20 foot swath that travels all the way down the driveway ending with a retaining wall at the bottom and what we wanted to do is fill the whole area up with plantings and these plantings are going to be blooming throughout different times of year. Uh, we have three different types of viburnums. This is a Shasta viburnum. It's going to be nice and a bit, it'll get about six to eight feet tall and wide so it's going to fill up this entire space. It's going to bloom white in around May and then it'll have berries for the birds in the late fall. Oh, and there's a transitions down to this other viburnum which is called a, a judai viburnum and again flowers white in the spring different kind of berries it's going to get about four to five feet tall and wide then we transition to endless summer hydrangeas summer bloomer the homeowner really wanted to have the the round 
mop head type flowers, like the ball shaped flowers. This one's going to be about four feet tall, four feet wide. Uh, over here, I like to repeat the plants, so it has some flow to it and it connects both sides. The, these are rosebud azaleas. They're more of a dwarf, semi-evergreen azalea. They're going to bloom pink. The homeowner really loved the idea of having swaths of pink in the yard. And they're going to be a spring bloomer and hopefully all grow together as a mound so it looks like one piece. Okay, so over here we have a third viburnum. This is called a viburnum opulus and it's going to get about three feet tall. It has a really nice rounded flower head. It's kind of similar to what the blue hydrangea the end of the summer is going to look like. And it's only going to get three feet tall, three feet wide, fill in this whole area, bloom white in the spring. So this is going to be a show of color in the spring, pinks and whites primarily. And then continuing down here, uh, here we get to the retaining wall. So the homeowners are thinking about doing a stone veneer to cover this area. Another consideration was putting in plants at the front edge of the wall, but that would take a good three, four years for those plants to get established to grow over the wall. So I think a stone veneer might be the best option, but we'll see. Okay, in this middle section, it's primarily evergreen. Starting in this front row, we have a broadleaf evergreen. It's a low growing, rhododendron. It's called rhododendron chinoides and it's going to flower white in the early spring. And then, so that's a broadleaf evergreen. Transitioning up to, this is an andromeda. It has this beautiful flower in actually in the springtime in I would say late April, early May. But then the, the, the flower heads stay on and have this beautiful red color. So it really adds character and interest to the area. Another, it's a broadleaf evergreen. So these two plants are going to keep their leaves all season long. The, the back is going to have, we have five fern spray cypress. These will get about 25 feet tall and just really create this beautiful bright green backdrop for all these beautiful plantings. So none of these are going to lose their leaves and I'm going to go help Fred get started planting this tree over here. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. Plaster has gone up, which means we're starting about the finished details. We've got the painters here, electricians, and also some decisions to make about final design. So Molly, our homeowner, and Shelby, our designer, that's your guys' job. Yes. What's the approach? What are you going for? Yeah, so Molly has a classic base, and okay. we're trying to make it a little more modern. All right. Pull me more out fun. a little bit. Right, clean it up a little bit, make it a little less fussy? Exactly. exactly. Gotcha. Now that we have a family, it needs to be less fussy. Okay. So foyer, first place to start. Exactly. Big so space. it really sets the tone for the entire house. Yeah. So we want something that's a little bold, a little fun, um, which would be either one of these options could kind of fit the bill for Wallpaper that. Wallpaper we're talking. Wallpaper we're talking. Are you leaning towards one over the other? Yes. Yeah, so I definitely am leaning towards this one right here. I like the depth, I like the colors, and I like the texture that you could see and feel in this sample. Okay, good. And this one might be a little too zebra-esque for Molly. I was gonna yeah. say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a fireplace here, original, uh, a new firebox, however, mm -hmm. and obviously a new surround going in. Shelby, you were kind enough to give us two options to think about. Describe them to us. Yes, so on the right-hand side is a little more of a traditional take on a mantle. We have pilasters that are anchoring either side. Mm -hmm with a nice mantle detail overhanging the top. Gotcha, and then on the left-hand side, On the left-hand side, so it's a little more of a modern take on a traditional mantle. So we've got kind of a traditional top, and then we kind of step down into more of a modern. Uh, Molly, as you look at the two, preference? I definitely have a preference. However, it's a combination of the two. Of course so, it <laughs> Of course is. it is. Never <laughs> easy, is it? So I definitely like the square. Over of, the pilaster. Of, yeah, over the pilaster. I'm not a big pilaster fan. Yep. Um, but I definitely like the top over here. Right. The mantle. Yeah. So this is where I really look to Shelby because sometimes I'm like, am I being too square? You know, do we yeah. need to bring in? 
But you guys can yeah. do this, right? I mean, you can mix and match and, and help us get through that. Exactly. So we'll show her some options on how we could blend the two yeah. and then see what works best. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, let's go to the dining room. This dining room is going to be awesome. Used to be a three season porch mm -hmm. with screens and sliders here, that beautiful green carpet. Gone. Walls of windows now. Love them. Tons of light, the arches. This is. We this love is this phenomenal. room. We love the light, we love everything about cool. it. Cool. So what do we have to decide on in here? So we've already selected this wallpaper here, which is a beautiful grass cloth. Nice. So that lends itself to a coastal home without being too nautical. More so wallpaper. That's, <laughs> exactly. exactly. So that's going to go floor to ceiling in here. Nice. Okay. And then we have some options for drapery. Mm -hmm. The top one has more of the greeny grays, which pulls in the colors from the butler's pantry in the kitchen. The bottom one is a little more of a singular color. I can tell you right now, this is my favorite. I like all the different tones in here and how it brings in the kitchen. All right, it'd be a great way to frame those beautiful windows. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, the other big detail in here is this tray ceiling, and it was sort of a necessity because we've got bathrooms. We got a master bath here, guest bath in there. Charlie had to hide some of the waistlines, traps. So drop the ceiling here, but you frame out, which is basically going to be the dining room table here. Exactly. So we had to get a little creative with what we were doing with the ceiling. So right now we have a nice focal point in the center. Uh -huh. So we're going to do a Venetian plaster. Oh, so, so just in the recess here. Just in the recess. Uh -huh. So Venetian that'll make it a plaster. bit more special. So we don't see Venetian plaster a lot. Walk us through you know, what exactly it is. Right, so the product is imported directly from Italy mm -hmm. and they mix the color into the product and they trowel it on and you yeah. have these beautiful trowel marks that create some nice depth. They leave these behind by exactly. design. Exactly, mm -hmm. yes, and yeah. it provides a nice beautiful sheen. It's and you've got four hard. samples here in terms of colors. We do, and here's we do. our drapery fabric. Okay. So the blue, you know, very nice little sky blue, maybe Same a little too sky-like. A little too Vegas. Vegas, there you yeah. go. This is kind of a pinkish. So this is introducing a new color. Which I love this color, however, I feel like it needs a little more pop, a little more oomph. Okay, and then you've got striations on this one. Yeah, while the striations are beautiful, it's a little too similar to the wallpaper. Okay, leaving us with maybe, well, I don't know, is that color okay for you? This one's a little too bold, yeah. um, and this one's, what we're thinking of will end up somewhere in between the two. We're okay. going to try out a couple more samples. Mm -hmm. I don't know much about Venetian plaster, but the one thing I do know is that you need a guy. <laughs> you need you someone do. who does it. You, you got do. a guy? I got a guy. Maurizio. Sounds like the right guy. He does. <laughs> cool. All right. Love the decisions. Thanks for the help. Thank you. Thank you. Most of the trim work in the house is installed, and a lot of it is new. Except for this window right here, the homeowner wanted to keep the old window with the old casing. The problem is, when it was demoed, the trim was damaged. Let me show you how we're going to fix it. All right, so this is what we're dealing with. We've got two pieces here that have been glued together to make one for one half. And this is the other side right here. And you can see this was busted pretty good when it was taken off. So what we need to do is glue this back together and fit it back to the window. So Natty made a form or a template right here to fit this piece in. And that way we put it under compression with these wedges. So we put it together and hold it while the glue dries. We can take this out? This is all ready, Tom. All right, let's pull it out. It's in there pretty good. Ooh, comes right up. There it is. All right, so there's one half. We have a little more sanding to do on that. And this piece here, in three pieces, we'll put this right in here. Try it first before we put some glue on there. Yeah, we got a little bit of sanding to do right there on that one. We can get it in. So let's sand that right there and then try it out. All right, let's see if that's enough off of that. Yeah, that fits good. Uh, we'll try that third piece. Yeah, that should be good. Let's take it out, we'll get some glue on it. All right, we're ready, right? Yes, sir. Get it 
couple of wedges on this. Okay, while that head casing is drying, we're ready to stall, install the two side casings. We couldn't salvage those because they were really broken when they demoed the window. But we were able to salvage some of the old trim from downstairs that matches the profile. So on this side, the casing is gonna be perfect, all right? We just gotta cut the height, nail it in place. But on this side, you can see the casing fits, but if you look, it's way too wide. So we have to cut this side of the casing to follow the contour of the wall also, so we're gonna scribe it in place. I'm gonna put a reference mark here on the windowsill, and another one right here on the edge of the window stop, and I'll take it away. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the dimension from this line that I marked on the stool right here to the edge of the window frame. And hold my scribes against that. Open them up a little. Hold my scribes against it and bring the scribe to the pencil mark right there. So now I take my scribes up here, hold it against the jam of the window and see if my line lines up. If I look close, it doesn't. It's off just a little bit. So I'm going to make my scribes a little bit wider so it lines up with this mark at the top, right there. And now I'm going to take that mark and transfer it down here. All right, with my two marks, one on the stool and then one up top, I put the side of the casing on each mark. My scribe is set to that dimension. So now I just take my scribes without moving them, put them tight against the wall on this side, bring them in, and put a mark following the wall. Maddie's going to take the casing over to the table saw, cut it on an angle to the widest point of the casing, bring it back to me, and I'll fine tune it with my block point. All right, let's see how that fits. Got the bevel on there, good. Nice, you left a little bit of the line on there. Now it fits. Pretty good there. That's good. It's away just a little bit there. So I'm gonna fine tune this edge right here with my block plane so we can get it tight against the wall. I don't need to take very much off. All right, let's try it. Oh yeah, perfect. All right, all we gotta do is cut the length and we can tack it in place. Hey, Maddie, Tommy. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Hey, right, Kevin. Let's see how it went, huh? Look at that beauty. That is going to be a real nice compliment to those leaded glass windows right in the front of the right. house. We saved this top casing here, this round one, glued it all back together. It was a lot of pieces. And we used some of the casing from downstairs. Nice. So worth it. It's a beautiful window. I'm glad we did it. Cool. All right. Well, next time, we're going to spend some time saving this original handrail and some of the original plaster that's still left in this house. So until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Matty Ford. I'm Tom Silva. For this old house here on Cape Ann. Did you give you any trouble, Matty? Hey. Just a little, but I might use you next time, There Kevin. you go. <laughs> you get things done quickly. Maybe not well, but quick and fast. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.